Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My name is Indonesia Binti Muhammad Najib Berumah dekat number is 2118250 So today discussions will we begin with the sovereignty of the Yang Dipertuan Agung Followed by the prerogative powers and the legal immunity under the federal constitutions Without further ado, who is the Yang Dipertuan Agung? The Yang Dipertuan Agung, also known as the supreme head of the federation The paramount ruler, or simply as the Agung, are the kings of Malaysia Is the constitutional monarch and the head of state of Malaysia Article 32 clause 1 pro provide the status of the Yang Dipertuan Agung and affirm his identity in the Federation. There shall be a supreme head of the Federation to be called the Yang Dipertuan Agung who shall take precedence over all persons in the Federation and shall not be liable to any proceeding whatsoever in any court except in the special court established under Part 15. Now we move on to the second point which is the elections of the YDPE is quite unique unlike any other countries whereby he is elected and selected through the rotations of his fellow male rule brother. His position is not permanent, can be removed anytime and his tenure only lasted to 5 years only. Article 32 clause 3 mentioned as follows that the young Dibetuan Agung shall be elected by the conference of rulers for a term of 5 years but may at any time resign his office by writing under his hand addressed to the conference of rulers or be removed from the office by the conference of rulers and shall cease to hold office on ceasing to be ruler. The provisions at the provision expressly mentioned the election and removal of the Yang Agung solely of the power of the Conference of Rulers. Who is the Conference of Rulers? Article 38, Clause 1 must be read together with Section 1 of the 5th Schedule. Describe that the Conference of Rulers shall subject to the following provisions of this schedule. Consists of their Royal Highnesses, the Rulers, and the Yang Dipetuan Agung of States not having a ruler. For the methods of election, Part 3 of the third schedule outlines the manners of appointing and removing the requirements of the total voters and consents of the elected, ruler, elected rulers. However, if the appointments of the Yang Dipertuan Agung, only Malay rulers are entitled to cast a vote and Yang Dipertuan Agung Negeri is excluded in this matter. Hence, it could be seen that the Malay rulers possess special and absolute power in appointing and dismissing the Yang Dipertuan Agung and any other organ does not have the same privilege nor the powers to do so. Now we move on to the Yang Dipertuan Agung is the head of religion. Islam has been a fundamental component of the country's constitution. Therefore, any matter relating to Islam, Islamic religious affairs and powers vested in the king as the head of religion as provided in Article 3, Clause 5. Notwithstanding anything in this constitution, the Yang Dipertuan Agung shall be the head of religions of Islam in the federal territories of Kuala Lumpur and Labuan. In fact, in the oath of the office of the Yang Dipertuan Agung of Fort Schedule proclaimed solemnly and truthfully declared that he would always preserve Islam and uphold the rule of law and order of the country. His Majesty is also Islamic religious leader for the states that do not have sultans. Next, according to Article 41, His Majesty is the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces of the Federation. His Majesty holds the highest ranking office in the common structure of the, militation, of the Malaysian military. Among noticeable and sovereign powers of His Majesty is in safeguarding the positions of the Malays and natives of Sabah and Sarawak in the legitimate interests of other communities in accordance with the provisions of Article 153, Clause 1. Article 153, 53 clause 2 addresses the issues of reservations of quotas for scholarship, education institutions, job in the field of public service, and the issues of permits or license for the operation of any trade or enterprise by Malay, Sabah, and Sarawak native. The provision entrusted to the Yang Dipertuan Agung to ensure that Malay, natives of Sabah and Sarawak and other communities are equitable and just by the society as a whole and intended to ensure that they are not neglected. Under the federal question, the Yang Dipertuan Agung has an array of functions and rules from appointing the Prime Minister to dissolving the Parliament in terms of executive, executive and legislature as well as the rules in matters of judiciary matter. For example, appointing the Superior Court judges according to Article 122B Clause 1. The provisions of the Constitution which deal with His Majesty are so numerous and varied as he played an important role in relation to the main organs of the government. Subsequently, he ensured the separations of powers between the main organs of the government in the Federation. In relation to public servants, he holds the sole power to appoint and remove the public servant as provided in Article 132 Clause 2A where in short every person who is the member of public services hold the office of the pleasure of the Yang Dipetuan Agung. It could be understood that as long as the office of public servants is not secure and may be removed on his, in his majesty will. The definitions of Malay ruler could be seen in Article 160, Clause 8, in subsection paragraph 8 in relation to the Negeri Sembilan, means the Yang Dipertuan Besar, acting 
on behalf of himself and the ruling he keeps in accordance with the constitutions of the state. And paragraph B, in the case of any state include except in clause 2 of article 181 and the third and fifth schedule, any person who is in accordance with the constitution of that state exercises the functions of the ruler. In this like I will like in this part discussion I would like to highlight Article 181 which provides subject to the provisions of this constitution, the sovereignty, prerogatives, powers and jurisdictions of the rulers within their respective territories, uh he they do had and had enjoyed and share remain affected. It is first to be noted that the constitution guarantees secure and protects the existing positions of the rulers through the level provision that I have mentioned before. Next, to ensure the continuance of the Sultanate institution, the provision of Article 71 has come into force, whereby it could be simplified that the institutions of the Sultanate is protected and any dispute arises shall concerns with the state constitution and the federal government or any other bodies could not interfere at all. In the case of Datuk Menteri Osman bin Baginda against Datuk Ombi Said Alwi bin Said Idrus 1981, the dispute arises in the appointments of the new undang of Luar Jelebu was invalid and ultra-biased with the constitutions of Luar Jelebu. The court held that in the matters affecting succession to the throne and the position, the court shall not entertain the claim because it does not have any jurisdiction to hear the case at all. And the matter should be concerned with the state constitution. Within the context of the Malay rulers' privileges through Article 38 Clause 4, it could be illustrated that it is very difficult to amend any provision pertaining to the respective matter and it is protected by the constitution, hence ensuring the sovereignty of Malay rulers in the Malaysia. In the light of political powers, an area where the rulers sought a bigger role for the constitutional sovereign was in the appointments to the state at legislature and administration. The administration. The Malay rulers have the similar discretion with the Yang Di Pertuan Agong in appointing the administration as well as the personal discretion as stated in the section 2 of the 8th schedule. It also highlighted the discretion powers of appointment of a concert, a region, the appointment of persons to Malay customary ranks, titles, honours and dignities and in the regulations of royal courts and places. In addition to key discretionary powers to modify and affect the political processes, Article 38 Clause 2 provides that the Malay rulers retain exclusive control over policy areas such as Islam and Malay customs and the Sultanate staff structure, the system of chieftainships, and the power to confer honours and grant awards and grant pardon. It can be summarized from the whole uh, presentation that the constitutional provisions that refer to the responsibility with executive characteristics are the most implemented by the Malay rulers and the Yang Dipertuan Ago. Though legally their powers was limited either to act on the advice or act in his own discretion as mentioned in Article 40 of the Federal Constitution, nevertheless, the provision concerning the Malays, the Malays religion, position, honours, privilege of His Majesty and the Malay rulers ensure the retentions of the sovereignty of the constitutional monarchy. Okay, so moving on to the prerogative of the Malay ruler and the Yang Di Pertuan Agong. Okay, so for the first uh, prerogative power of the Malay rulers is discretionary power. So this is provided uh, under section 1, subsection 2 of the 8th schedule of the federal constitution whereby the ruler may act in his own discretion in certain function. Um, for example, the appointment of Menteri Besar, the withholding of consent uh, to the dissolution of legislative assembly, the making of requests for the meeting of conference of rulers, any function relating to the head of the region of Islam, the appointment of an heir or heirs, the appointment of persons uh, to Malay customary, and also uh, the regulation of royal courts and palace. Okay, so for the YDPE, the first prerogative power is also in terms of discretionary power. So this is provided under Article 40, Clause 2 of the Federal Constitution, whereby uh, the YDPE is allowed to use his discretion in performing certain function, for example, the appointment of Prime Minister, the withholding of consent for the dissolution of Parliament, the requisition of meeting for the conference of rulers, and also in other, any other case mentioned in this constitution. Okay, so for the next prerogative of the Malay ruler is in terms of pardon. So this is provided under Article 42, Clause 1 of the Federal Constitution, whereby it stated that the ruler or the young deputy of a state has power to grant pardons, reprieves, and respites in respect of all other offences committed in his state. And we also refer to Article 42, Clause 4, whereby uh, the power to grant pardon shall so far as they are exercisable by the ruler or the young deputy of a state be exercised on the advice of a pardon sport and this is constituted uh, in accordance with clause 5. 
So, uh, if we refer to Article 42, Clause 5, it stated that the parties board uh, constituted for each state shall consist of the Attorney General of the Federation, the Chief Minister of the State, and not more than three other members who shall be appointed by the ruler or the young leader to an agree. Okay, um, so for the prerogative of parting for the YDPA, it is also stated under Article 42, Clause 1 of the Federal Constitution, whereby the YDPA has power to grant pardons uh, for all offences which have been tried by court martial and all offences committed in the federal territories of Kuala Lumpur, Labuan and Putrajaya. So we can also refer to Article 42, Clause 4, whereby uh, the power of the YDPA to grant pardon so far as they are exercisable by the YDPA, a malfunction with respect to which federal law may make provision under Clause 3 of Article 40. So, Article 40, Clause 3 of the Federal Constitution provides that the, law, the federal law may make provision for requiring the YDPA to act after consultation with or on the recommendation of any person or body of persons other than the cabinet in the exercise of any of his function, except uh, the function exercisable in his discretion and also the function with respect to the exercise of which provision is made in any other article. Okay, so we can also refer to the case of Karpan Singh and Sultan of Selangor, 1985. So in this case, the question of royal pardon was first brought up. So the applicant, he argued that the respondent, the Sultan, he must first consider the advice of the Selangor Pardons Board before applying his mind to the petition for clemency before him. So in doing so, he has violated Article 42 of the Federal Constitution, whereby he stated that he would not pardon anyone convicted of drug trafficking in the state. So the judge referred to the case of Sim Ki Choin, uh, 1985, whereby the court held that the power to grant a royal pardon is a power of high prerogative of mercy and it is not amenable to judicial review. So the YDPA uh, in the federal territories and the Malay rulers uh, who have power to exercise the prerogative of mercy in their respective state, they are not required to follow the advice or recommendation of the pardon board. And their decisions are not subject to legal dispute, it cannot be challenged. Okay, so the next prerogative of the YDPA is the prerogative of proclamation of emergency. So this is provided under Article 150 Clause 1 of the Federal Constitution, whereby it stated that if the YDPA is satisfied that there is a grave emergency, whereby the security or the economic life or even the public order in the Federation uh, is threatened, he may issue a proclamation of emergency. However, as stated under Article 40 Clause 1 of the Federal Constitution, the Argo must be convinced that in the exercise of his function under this constitution or federal law, uh, the Argo shall act in accordance with the advice of the cabinet or of a minister acting under the general authority of the cabinet, except as otherwise provided by this constitution. So we can also refer to Article 150 Clause 8, um, where it stated that notwithstanding anything in this constitution, the satisfaction of the YDPA mentioned in Clause 1 and Clause 2B shall be final and conclusive and it shall not be challenged or called in question in any of the court. Okay, so to summarize uh, the three provisions that I've mentioned earlier, actually before um, issuing an emergency proclamation, the ARGO must be convinced that there is a grave emergency which threatens the security, economic life or the public order. And when the state of emergency is declared, the advice provided by Article 40 Clause 1 is not applicable because the cabinet or the prime minister, they can only request uh, the YDPA for it. And Whatever the Argon decision cannot be challenged or questioned in any court as provided in Article 150 Clause 8 of the Federal Constitution. Now we move to the next slide, which is the legal immunity of the Malay rulers and the YDPA under the Federal Constitution. The history behind the amendment when the Malaysian Parliament amended the Federal Constitution in 1993 with the goal of removing the the royalty legal immunity. The amendments were made at a time when the Malaysian monarchy witnessed controversial incidents involving rulers who abused their powers. Among that is the commerce incidents. Prior to the amendments, the constitutions allowed rulers who disobeyed the law immunity from prosecution in a criminal court unless they willingly surrounded their legal immunity. So next, we move to the events leading up to the amendments. Among the events is the Gomez Incidents. Gomez Incidents is basically about Dolores Gomez, who was the coach of a hockey team. 
he was summoned to the Istana or palace in Johor Bahru to meet the Sultan of Johor. On 1st December, after his first visit to the palace, Gomez sought treatment at a local private clinic for bruises to his face and stomach. On Sunday, on Sunday, 6 December, he made a police report in which he alleged that he had been a victim of an assault while at the place and that although there were several people in the place at that time, the only person responsible for his injury was the Sultan himself. In response to the comments, incidents and other incidents, they were called for steps to be taken to remove the royal immunity. These proposed amendments gave you the immunity of the rulers, changes with respect to the rulers' powers to grant pardons and changes with respect to sedition in the context of parliamentary proceedings concerning the rulers. The provisions of the constitutions providing for the immunity of the rulers were to be amended to replace general immunity with an immunity limited to their actions in an official capacity. The proposed amended versions of Article 181 Clause 2 read, no proceeding whatsoever shall be brought in any court against the ruler of a state in respect only of anything done or omitted to be done by him in the exercise or purported exercise of his functions under any written law. Consequently, the provisions of the constitutions with respect to pardons were to be amended such that where a ruler of his consort, son or daughter were involved the power could not be exercised by the ruler himself. The proposed amendments also deal with restrictions on concerning the privileges of the rulers in either parliament or state legislature. Meeting of the rulers with the government's representative led to some last-minute changes in the proposed amendments before they were presented in parliament. The changes provided for the creation of a special court to deal with cases involving the rulers. If civil or criminal actions were brought against a ruler of the king, or the king, these were under the revised versions of the proposed amendments be dealt with by a special court. So what is special court? Special court is defined under Article 182 of the Federal Constitution. Article 182 Clause 1 says that there shall be a court which shall be known as the special court and shall consist of the Chief Justice of the Federal Court who shall be the chairman, the chief judges of the high court, and two other persons who hold or have had office as charge of the federal court or a high court appointed by the conference of rulers. Clause 2. Any proceeding by or against the Yang Dipertuan Agong or the ruler of a state in his personal capacity shall be brought in a special court established under Clause 1. Clause 3. The special court shall have exclusive jurisdiction to try all offences committed in the Federation by the Pertuan Agong or the ruler of the state in all civil cases by or against the Pertuan Agong or the ruler of the state, notwithstanding where the cause of actions arose. And the last one is Clause 4. The special court shall have the same jurisdictions and powers uh, as are vested in the inferior courts, the high court and the federal court by these constitutions or any federal law and shall have its registry in Kuala Lumpur. Nonetheless, the proposed amendments as revised were tabled in the Dewan Rakyat or House of Representatives and on January 18, 1993 and were passed by the both houses by January 20. However, in order to charge the YDPA or a ruler, Consent of the Attorney General must be obtained as cited in Article 183 of the Federal Constitution. So Article 183 uh, says that no actions, civil or criminal, shall be instituted against the YDPA or the ruler of a state in respect of anything done or omitted to be done by him in his personal capacity except with the consent of the Attorney General personally. So what happened when Agung is charged with committing an offence after the amendment? So there are few provisions provided. Among that are Article 33E, Article 32 Class 1 and Article 32 Class 2. So Article 33A says that Yang Dipertuan Agung shall cease to exercise the functions of the YDPA if charged with an offence. So Clause 1 says that were the YDPA is charged with an offence under any law in the special court, as established under Part 15, he shall cease to exercise the functions of the YDPA. And Clause 2, the period during which the YDPA ceases, under Clause 1, to exercise the functions of the YDPA provided for Clause 3 of Article 30, 32. 
So Article 32 Clause 1 says that there shall be a supreme head of the Federation to be called the YDPA who shall take precedence over all persons in the Federation and shall not be liable to any proceeding whatsoever in any court except in the special court established under Part 15. And the last one is Article 32 Clause 2. The Consort of the YDPA to be called the Raja Pemaisuri Agong shall take precedence next after YDPA over all persons in the Federation. Okay, now we move to the ruler part. So what happens when a ruler is charged for committing an offence after the amendment? So it's same with the YDPA, there are also some provisions provided under the federal constitution. Among that are section 1A, subsection 1, H schedule, section 1A, subsection 2, and section 1A, subsection 3. So the first one, section 1A, subsection 1, it says that where the ruler is charged with an offence under any law in the special court established under Part 15 of the federal constitution, he shall cease to exercise the functions of the rulers of the state. And subsection 2, it says that during the period when the ruler ceases under subsection 1 to exercise the functions of the ruler of the state, a region or a council of regency, as the case may be, shall be appointed in accordance with the state constitution to exercise the functions of the ruler of the state. And the last one is subsection 3, it says that when the ruler is convicted of an offence in the special court and sentenced to imprisonment for more than one day, he shall cease to be the ruler of the state unless he receives a free pardon. So now we move to the conclusions. In conclusion, the above provisions illustrated that after the amendments of the federal constitution regarding the legal immunity of the Malay rulers and the YDPA, it could be said that the YDP and the ruler are no longer immune to be pre to being prosecuted in court. The virtue of Article 32 Clause 1 says that the YDP and the rulers may be prosecuted in any proceedings only in the special court as mentioned in Article 32 Clause 1 of the Federal Constitution.